discuss the contribution of Skinner's research to our understanding of human behaviour. There are eight marks available for the question. The mark scheme clearly says that to achieve in the top mark band, so to achieve seven or eight marks, the understanding of the contribution of Skinner's research should be evident and well explained, so knowledge needs to be accurate and clear. Detail and extension needs to be given. There then needs to be a discussion of Skinner's research and that should be strong and in-depth. So this could be an evaluation of the contribution of Skinner's research. And again, this needs to be accurate information and additional in-depth detail needs to be provided. The answer should have a clear structure and technical language should be used throughout. We know that for a discussed question, both AO1 and AO3 marks will be available. So AO1 knowledge, four marks will be available, and AO3 evaluation, another four marks will be available. You need to make sure that the material that you present reflects this and that there is the equal amount of both AO1 knowledge and AO3 evaluation. The question is specifically asking for a discussion of how Skinner's research has helped us to understand human behaviour. So how can his work help us to understand why people behave in the way that they do. This means that examples of human behaviour need to be included and Skinner's research needs to be applied to it. Let's take a look at this sample response. AO1 material will be highlighted in blue and AO3 material will be highlighted in pink. Skinner's research demonstrated positive reinforcement, which involves presenting a reward after a behaviour showing how behaviours could be encouraged. An experiment using a Skinner box where rats receive food pellets for pressing a lever illustrated how behaviours can be reinforced. This helped explain behaviours like a child completing chores to receive sweets, as the sweets serve as a reward reinforcing the behaviour. Similarly, negative reinforcement, where a negative stimulus is removed, was shown when rats could escape electric shocks by pressing a lever, reinforcing the behaviour of lever pressing. Skinner's research also looked at punishment, where the introduction of a negative consequence aims to decrease the likelihood of a behaviour occurring again. For example, rats receiving electric shocks when pressing a lever decrease the likelihood of lever pressing in the future. This can be seen when a student talking during class is given a detention, intending to decrease the likelihood of talking during class happening again. Skinner's research was carried out in laboratory settings. This means that they were conducted in highly controlled conditions and this reduces the impact of extraneous variables. As a result, their findings can be said to be reliable and have scientific credibility. The findings of the research have heavily influenced reward programmes used in schools and prisons. Token economies, where individuals are rewarded for showing desirable behaviours, completing work, meeting deadlines or using manners, have shown to be extremely successful in modifying behaviour. This shows the value of Skinner's research and the positive contributions it has made. However, the research does ignore the role of biological and genetic factors that can shape behaviour. It ignores the interaction of innate predispositions and the impact that the environment can have on someone's behaviour. This means that Skinner's work could be quite restrictive and may not give a complete explanation of human behaviour. This response effectively discusses Skinner's research to our understanding of human behaviour. It first outlines the findings related to reinforcement and punishment. In the initial AO1 paragraph, the answer provides clear descriptions of positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement and punishment, and it uses Skinner's experiments with rats to illustrate this further. This shows a clear understanding of Skinner's research. Remember that Skinner is specifically named in the specification and therefore a question as direct as this about his work would be asked. This description demonstrates a detailed understanding of the work and its implications for real life behaviour, such as the child completing chores for rewards or a student avoiding detention to prevent punishment. These real life examples again add to the depth of the response and really show the value of the research in explaining everyday human behaviour. 
the evaluation points, so AO3, are then presented in the subsequent paragraphs and offer a structured evaluation of the strengths and limitations of Skinner's research. Each of the evaluation points follows a point explaining consequence structure, which enhances the clarity and the depth of the response. We can see from the first evaluative paragraph that it identifies the point, it identifies the strength, that the research was carried out in lab settings. It then explains this point, meaning that the experiments were therefore highly controlled and it reduces the impact of extraneous variables. And it gives the consequence that as a result of being carried out in a lab, the findings can be said to be reliable, the consequence. This is repeated in the second paragraph. Again, a strength is identified, the point is given, that the research has influenced reward programmes. It goes on to explain this and gives examples of token economies being used in schools and prisons. And again, it gives the consequence. As a result of this, it shows the massive positive contributions that Skinner has made. And then in the final evaluation paragraph, the point is identified, this time a limitation, the fact that it ignores the role of biological um, and genetic factors. It explains this by outlining how it ignores the innate predispositions people will have or the influence of the environment. And again, it gives the consequence. As a result of this, it means that Skinner's work could be quite restrictive. Remember, in questions like this, there is not a need for an equal evaluation. There doesn't need to be an equal amount of strengths and limitations. Both just need to be included. The use of technical language throughout the response, such as positive and negative reinforcement, extraneous variables, really enhances the precision and the depth of the response. These terms are essential for being able to accurately convey Skinner's research concepts and its implications. So it really does add to the quality of the response. So overall, the answer provides a really comprehensive discussion of Skinner's research contributions because it combines the detailed descriptions of the findings of his research and with a really structured evaluation. Technical language is used throughout.